Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 69-72 carryover league. We got another elimination video today. Eliminating the Ohio players. They, uh, you know, they went to the All-Star break in decent shape. Uh, they were in second place, had a chance to compete for first place. They lost four out of five to the Tigers, and then they would lose again to Oakland. And their season's over with a record of 15 and 21. And uh, their lone all-star was Don Wilson. Had a fine year, 7-5, 92 innings, five complete games, a 3-11 ERA. Uh, was lower than that, but last couple starts weren't that good. But he was an all-star for him. Mudcat Grant uh, was an all-star last couple years. Didn't go this year. He only had one. Only had one elected. So he had six saves. He was fine in limited save opportunities for the team. The rest of the pitching staff was lackluster, and that's not a misprint. Doc Ellis, just a horrible year. 0-7, 51 innings, 7-0-6 ERA. No LSD, no no, unfortunately. But he can come back next year uh, with revenge on his mind and tear up the league is what we're predicting out of Doc Ellis. Now, hitting, you look at the top there and find something Kind of remarkable that Gene Kleins and Johnny Jeter, the twins, had the same number of at-bats, of hits, of walks, average and on base were identical. Uh, they also were a couple runs, a couple RBI, a couple doubles, a triple, a homer, and a 10 strikeout difference in the two players. Remarkable comparison there. Uh, these two guys were added in the draft, so that's a good future for this team. Two guys at the top, along with Chuck Hinton, who wasn't voted the All-Star Game this year, though he has been to the All-Star Game last two years. Those three are the best hitters on the team, and they did fine. Um, it gets a little thin after that. Um, and then you see the Mendoza line guys. Ike Brown, 11 home runs, but he hit 189. It was kind of all or nothing. Thought he would draw more walks. He only had a 277 on base. That was not what I predicted for this guy. And, uh, oh, Bill Robinson, just 5 for 53, one of the worst performances of the season. Robinson's card, though, will come back in 1973. We'll see that when we get to uh, pulling the cards out. Um, Dave Cash, bad year, 224. So if he hits 300 at the top of the lineup, this team will come back. They'll, be, they'll rebound next year. So let's take a look now at the Ohio players and see the eight guys who go away and who's gonna come back. I'll pull the 69 cards out. And... and that would be those. These eight players' cards will have to be decided upon uh, advancing them into the future or retiring them or putting them on waivers. These eight guys. So, who's coming back? How many hitters and pitchers? Well, we've been seeing this quite frequently. We have the 7 5 split that I like. Seven hitters and five pitchers. That creates a balance so that you're not short in one of the areas. And we talked about, let's bring up Kleins and Jeter first of all. Remember the twins? The twin players? <laughs> Here they are. I mean, they're really close to being twins too. Um. And these were both extra player cards in 71 and 72. And you look at the performances, 320 and 334, and they both hit 326, which is divide that in half. So uh, that's, the, that's your future. Um, and this guy, Chuck Hinton, he's been to several All-Star games. 318 card. So, you know, this is the guys they get in the expansion draft, and they're pretty good. And you add in Dave Cash and Ike Brown. Look at Ike Brown's card. I mean, this is a nice start of an offense here. Only J.C. Martin, and well, he's not even, he's okay. 270 here, maybe? Daryl Thomas is not very good short. But you see, they have the beginnings of a really nice offense. So you have Martin catching. You can put Ike Brown at first, Cash at second. Daryl Thomas is shortstop, and Kleins uh, can play left, Cheater can play center, Hinton can play right. Not very good defense at all. There's no doubt about that. This is a bad defensive team. But they got some sticks, and 
pitching staff. They bring back their ace, Don Wilson, and they bring back Doc Ellis, who just had some bad luck. Don't get it. 0-7? Doesn't make sense. He was 13-10 and with 3.21 ERA and 70 for the Pirates. Just don't get it how that could have happened. Uh, Campisi, the back end, this is the good guys. Hall and Grant, lefty-righty, set up man and closer with ERAs of buck 83 and 255. So, that's some nice stuff right there. It turns out, fortunately, that the eight guys we're getting rid of were not the eight best players on the team. And so the higher players have a really decent chance of being a lot better next year. Let's see what they do with those other eight players. All right, let's see what the Ohio players do with the eight guys from 69 who are no longer. First guy is Lou Klimchok from the division rival Indians. Lou played for the Kansas City A's in that decade. And then, uh, weird, just, well, I don't know why they put these little year markers there, but that's different. The way baseball reference looks here with these extra. Anyway, so 69, he hit 287 and 279 plate appearances. That's the card we used. And we had a nice 753 OPS, good stats for a platoon guy. But in 1970, it doesn't happen for him, does it? He struggles. So let's retire the first guy on the, on the list, Lou Klimchok. He'll be $1 in the retire column. Next up, Bill Robinson. This is going to be a tricky one, but it's going to work out pretty good for the Ohio players. So he played from 66 to 83. Bill Robinson has big years with the Pirates in the late 70s. Got himself a World Series ring in 79. Anyway, so he was brought up at 23 and uh, 67, 68, and 69, and then... He didn't really do much in those three years, you can see. So he went back to the minors, I guess, for a couple years. Try to figure it out. And in 73, he blossoms with 25 homers and a 288 batting average. And that's the year they'll get him. It has to be that year. The other ones aren't very good. So fortunately, they held on, they held on to a guy in the four-year carry league. He'll give you four years of that card. So this is a win-win-win. For this team. So Bill Robinson was the keeper. And I'm going to put in my notes to remind me. 73 is the big year. That changes everything. He goes from being a 171 hitter to being a 283, 25 homer, 855 OPS guy. That, that kind of improvement will really help this team. Next up, Willie Smith. He was a Cub. He played with uh, Ernie Banks at first. Played for the California Angels, too. Uh, Detroit, Cleveland, and then the Cubs is where. I believe he fin finishes, yes, in 71. Oh, it goes to the Reds in 71. So the 69 card we used, he had a nice on-base percentage and some slugging here. Brought it up to a 771 OPS. Everything dips the next year by 30 points or more. And uh, I'm not even sure. Let's see, we have to see if we can waive him uh, if they made his card for the Cubs in 70. So we're going to go to Gary's roster page at superds.tripod.com slash somrosters.html. We're going to look at all the roster sheets. We're looking for the 1970 reprint. This is what we're using. So it's printed in, it says 1970 there because this is a reprint. So when we go to the Cubs, we want to see if Willie Smith's card was made. And Willie Smith, don't see it, infield or outfield. So let's see if they made it as an extra player card for the Cubs. And they did. So it's an extra player card in 1970. So he sneaks in. As having a Stratomatic card, which means he also means he can be put on waivers. And by having him on right waivers now, he has a chance to get a job anywhere in the league. Left-handed corner, first base outfield DH type. If he's got a nice split, who knows? He might make, make it back. Next up, your 1965 America League Most Valuable Player. 
the pronunciation here, because I always butcher this guy's name. Uh, no. Anyway, Zoilo. We'll just leave it at that. Um, 65, he's an MVP of the American League and a Gold Glove winner at shortstop. And he also led the American League in strikeouts at 122. Strikeouts. 45 doubles, 12 triples. <laughs> Plate appearances, at-bats, runs scored, doubles, triples, and strikeouts, and total bases. Uh, for a 65 Twins team that lost the World Series to the Dodgers. Um, 69 card we used. It wasn't very good. They do make a card in 71. It's not very good. It's time for Zoilo to call it a career. The 71 card, if it's, it should be printed because it's 200 at-bats. That can be examined and guys can come out of retirement if needed. Next up is Dave Watkins. He was a backup catcher for the uh, Phillies. And that was it. 69 was it. And so that one little bit, one little blip for Dave. 174 at bats. But that was all she wrote. He's retired. And now we see that the Ohio players have a kind of a problem here. They have three guys who have to retire, which means they've got to make some deals in the offseason to acquire keepers and wavered guys. The next three guys, a couple of them look like keepers, beginning with Al Downing. Al Downing, 61 to 77. Nice career for Al. Started with the Yankees and Dodgers. Milwaukee's in there a little bit. This was his 69 Yankee card. Uh, 1.27 whip. But look in 71, he's third in Cy Young voting. A 20 game winner, third in Cy Young voting? Oh my goodness, yeah, we want him. Al Downing is going to come back in a big way for the Ohio players, folks. That's great news. Adding Al Downing to Don Wilson and Doc Ellis, Bill Robinson, another big bat for this team. They're looking better than a regular old expansion team. Rudy May, next guy up, another long career. Great guy. Started with the start with the Angels. Had a long career all over the place. California, and then the Yankees, and the Orioles, Montreal, Yankees again. Um, but in 69, he had a nice ERA. Buck 15 whip. Great years in 71 and 72. All this with the Angels. And the higher players are saying, nah, 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 nah. He's going to be the fourth part of the rotation. Rudy May. And you can see the pitching rotation next year is going to be stacked. Don Wilson, Doc Ellis, Al Downing, and Rudy May. Ellis could probably be moved down to number four starter. Maybe taking the pressure off Doc, he'll, he'll pitch better. We talked about his problems he had. And the last guy, Al Worthington. Kind of getting near the end of the end of the game here for Al. Yeah, he's retired as well. So the team's going to have to make some moves. Al Worthington was brought in. He was good for that 65 Twins team, I think. Was he not? Yeah, he was. Nice, nice reliever for the Twins in 65. Um, by 69, though, he started to lose it. Up until then, though, look at that. In his mid mid 30s, he did a fine job. This card we used this past season was not his best work, and uh, it's time for him to retire. Al Worthington retires, and so you see, it's a good news, bad news story. They need to find a keeper. Finding a waiver guy is whatever, that's not a big deal, but you need to get a keeper. The only way you get a keeper is you gotta trade one of your 12 assets. So, I'm not sure which guy you're gonna trade, but, uh, Unless another team just waves a keeper that's on the fringe. But you need to get a keeper and a waiver guy and lose two of these retirement guys. And that's the story of the Ohio players. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.